Hey you right guys, Trophy Reacts here and today we are watching and reacting to episode 11 of How I Met Your Mother Season 3. I've pretty much just watched episode 10 and I'm in the mood for another one to be fair. Like I say, it happens from time to time where I just want to do back to back How I Met Your Mothers. Because uh, like I say, I'm really enjoying season 3 so far. So if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like because it does help the video and it does help the channel. And Patreon is linked down below. If you do want to join us over on Patreon, we will have finished season 3 by the time this one's on YouTube and we should be an episode or two into season four so yeah down below but for now guys let's do this oh my god <laughs> i have a tattoo oh that's what one that one tramp stamp <laughs> tramp stamp kids uh we're gonna do <laughs> removed i love that they actually carry on because a lot of sitcoms would just forget that that was a thing consequences that follow <laughs> say goodbye kids because it won't be around much longer Oh, but Ted, if you get rid of the butterfly, how's everyone going to know you're a stripper from Reno with daddy issues? What if he actually is? No moments of mockery because in just 10 surprisingly expensive sessions, Stella is going to zap that butterfly right off the face of my lower back. Stella? Dr. Stella Zinman. She's the best in the business. And she's rather cute. In fact, is it going to end up worse? We're movie together tonight. Okay, how did that happen? The golden rule, right? Love thy neighbor. Uh, actually, it's do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's from the Bible. Hmm. Ted, Ted, I've worked out this whole thing where the golden rule is love thy neighbor. So just Barney has rules. Okay. Now the golden rule is love thy neighbor, but there's one rule above it: the platinum rule. Okay. Ever, ever, ever love thy neighbor. <laughs> well, that's cute, but she's not my neighbor. She's my doctor. Like he's ever followed that rule. Convince you not to set foot out that door. It's a story older than time, my friend. <laughs> I'm actually going to convince him it's going to be the whole lab. One. Attraction. Okay. Oh, that's not possible. It's true. That's not even possible. Twelve of them. No way. Hi, Barney. Hey. Here's your gin and tonic. Hey. Oh, gosh. Look at that. What? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> December 2006. Oh, must be our new neighbors. I'm Michael. And I'm Laura. Oh, hi. Oh, it's her. She's from a bunch of stuff. We love brunch. <laughs> you must be Robin. Hmm. Yeah. Kurt the Iron Man Irons. What? The Iron Man Irons. Uh, a former athlete? Hockey. Okay, the attraction's there. The platinum rule doesn't apply to me. And that's step two. Bargaining. Okay. But this whole life's gonna be Barney doing a monologue. But he used to play hockey and I'm a Canadian. I can't help it. Oh, if yeah, you were yeah, missing yeah. some that's... teeth, I probably would have already hit that. Robin, it's a mistake. Remember what happened with me and Marshall, the Gerards across the hall? Michael and Laura, they're awesome. We're gonna invite them over for dinner. No. Are you no. insane? No, guys, 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 this is <laughs> Panicked. You nod at them politely in the hall. You call the cops. If you haven't seen them in a while and you smell something funny and that is it. Isn't that every city ever? For the most part. Apart from Stars Hollow. And you've got the couple's version of the hots for them. Oh yeah, you want to eat brunch with them. You want to browse a pottery barn with them. You want to go antiquing with them, don't you? Oh yeah. Well, Marshall really does. <laughs> And with me and Wendy the waitress, I've decided to seduce Wendy the waitress. No. Don't Otherwise, we'll separate why? years. Is the only hair that's changed is Lily. We're perfect for each other. Barney, we love this bar. If you screw over Wendy the waitress, you're going to kill the bar. Bar killer. Don't kill the well, bar. Well, you're still there in three years, so. Yeah, well, I think it'll be okay. And it was a huge mistake. Maybe yeah. she quit. Well, I think it'll be okay. And it was a huge mistake. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be um, okay. And it yeah. was a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it'll be okay. It definitely was. That was the longest intro. Five minutes before the intro. Ted, trust me. He's still doing his hair. Even doing anything at this point. Is it all weird? I'll back off. That's what everyone thinks. And then along comes step three. Submission. <laughs> Am I giving me a hand? Not at all. Robin, mm. I got two tickets to the Rangers, center ice. Wanna go? Didn't take long for anyone, did it? And then we discovered the movers lost all our kitchen boxes. We don't have a single pot or pan. And guess we're ordering takeout. Wanna have dinner with us tonight? No. 
<laughs> oh, oh, oh. I assume he quit as well. What goes so horribly wrong for all three of these? Or well, Barney, I can imagine. That was an interesting use of the beverage gun. <laughs> Club soda can get anything off. Oh, it finally happened. All this time, every drink I brought you. Really? I always felt there was this unspoken connection between us. <laughs> and I was right. Hey, can mm. I get a gin and tonic? <laughs> wow. I bet you didn't pay for that gin and tonic. Oh, I paid for it. <laughs> but you gotta admit, there is an upside to breaking the platinum rule. Like maybe as her boyfriend, I could get a discount on treatments. What, all the laser removals you're gonna have? At first, that's step four. Perks. There's a lot of steps to this. Last night at the hockey game, Kirk got us into the locker room and I met Mason Raymond. Mason Raymond? But I think it's going really well. That's what we thought. And it's so convenient. They're right across the hall. Say, it's Sunday and, and we want to have a brunch double date with someone. We just go across the hall. <laughs> oh, he's so happy. Say, we want to play a game of charades. Go on, say it. Uh oh, oh, well, yep, there you go, do it. You just go across the hall. Yep, I, I think that's. Come on, people, get excited. Oh, he's for getting us. up. We've got a great thing going here. Sweetie, I had the kitchen whip these up, no charge. Wow. Okay. Bye. I mean, not bye. I'm not leaving. I'll be over there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What? We like this bar. Don't kill the bar day. Oh. Don't worry about the bar. Don't worry about the bar. I'm not killing the bar. Wendy the waitress has that seen is how I human. operate this place. It is perfectly clear to everyone involved that this is nothing more than a temporary fling. Mm, I don't know if she got the memo on that one, mate. It's fine. But it wasn't. It's fine. But it wasn't. It's fine. <laughs> but it wasn't. That's <laughs> the domino effect. Just to step five, the tipping point. Go on. And clear. So you want to do something later? Oh, so you're talking to me now. Okay. What are you talking about? I'm talking about last night. You said you'd call and you didn't. I missed you and I waited up, but you didn't call. <laughs> that really hurt. Where, where? It must have been like two weeks. Forgot. I'm sorry, sweetie. I don't want to fight tonight. It's our first week anniversary. <laughs> Not even two. Oh, a week. A week anniversary. Hey, Wendy. Uh, do me a favor and send a glass of champagne to that pretty young thing over there. Oh my God! What? Mate, why would you do that? Oh, why would you say that? <laughs> over there, you. You're the pretty young thing. Is what I meant. I guess that's something he would usually ask her to do. Oh, okay. Thanks, sweetie. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> and what's the tipping point here? Hey, neighbors. We bought all the fixings for a Mexican fiesta. Oh. Oh, they just constantly want to cook here, I guess. Fiesta would be complete without. Oh, dude, I should made other plans. So, I... okay. One word. Two syllables. Sounds like. Oh, I mean, these two just can't Charades, take a hint. Charades. What do you say? Yeah, I guess there's only so much charades you can play. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> fair enough. I'll, I'll say fair on all those. Apart from Barney's, um, after a week. Read it tomorrow. Don't do this, Ted. <laughs> Want to get out of the way? I kind of want to see Ted do it just to see the tipping point. Oh, God! Oh. Perfect. Such a jerk. Which brings us to step six. You finally realize you've made a huge mistake, and now you have to live with it. Step six is called Perg. Wait for it. Go on. Keep waiting. <laughs> Keep waiting for all of eternity, only to discover there's no escape. A Tory. There we go. God, I'm such <laughs> an idiot. Yeah. Kurt. The Iron Man Irons keeps leaving me love God. notes on post-its. I mean, some of these people are just actual psychopaths, so to be fair to these lot. Out there waiting for us. 
sometimes we'll send Ted out first as a scout. Nobody's there. Then we'll go out one second later, and there they are. It's freaking supernatural. Are they ghosts? Can only we see them? Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Ah. <laughs> I wonder if they still live there. How could you guys let me date Wendy the waitress? Oh, you are kidding me. Don't go hard, dude. No, you can't, mate. You can't. Ah, there she is. <laughs> I mean, we don't see her working there anymore, so... My own bar. Remember the old Barney? He was a lion, the king of the jungle, stalking whatever prey he chose, going in for the kill. You've got a whole meat logger and a whole corpses, don't you? Yeah, uh, it probably actually does. What was once my jungle is now my zoo, and I am forced to mate with the same old lioness again and again and again. <laughs> I love how it's been a week. Put a bell around my neck and scratch my belly, kids, for I am just a docile house cat now. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> okay. Well, we love this bar. You can't dump or marry her if you have to. Wendy the waitress, hyphen Stinson. <gasps> Don't kill the bar, dude. <gasps> I think it's too late. A relationship ectomy is a delicate surgery as it is, but in the case of the platinum rule, it takes a very, very steady hand. And that's step seven. Confrontation. There's so many steps. <laughs> I can't even remember some of these now. Kurt. We need to talk. I like you. Guys, we like you a lot. I don't like you. Now Barney just got on with it, I guess. In classic Barney fashion. A little sick of the whole charade. We're getting a little sick of charades. I mean, I don't like you that way. I used to like you that way, but now that I've seen everything there is to see, I don't know, I kind of want to see those same parts, just on other girls. Wow! What a way to dump someone! <laughs> Jesus. Maybe we should just go back to being neighbors. Um, other girls and you, if you're into that. But the other girls have to be there too. That's the important part. Gosh, you're just terrified of ever getting close to anyone, aren't you? <laughs> he actually is. I mean, we're getting deep into the Barney psyche there, but that's something to worry about later on in the show, I think. Because you have to see this person again. There's a step eight. Fallout. And now here's Kurt, the Iron Man Irons, with sports. Kurt. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Kurt. I mean, he might just get fired. He might not even quit. Well, the Knicks lost. It's sad, really. They had a real shot. Then, out of nowhere, game over. And why? What okay, <laughs> no. Uh, oh, no. Well, their perimeter shooting has been a little bit off this season. The Knicks lost because they were afraid of getting hurt, so they didn't even try. I mean, he is doing too much, is he not? The Knicks didn't deserve my love to begin with. <laughs> the Knicks suck. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Did you see anything? I think we're clear. Okay, go, go, no, you're go. definitely not. You're definitely not. Oh, this looks like a prison. We've never seen that hole. That's so kind of disturbing in a way. Guys, are you there? I forgot my keys. Can you open up? It's just... Oh, they used that voice. Uh, yeah, and they could be holding him at gunpoint. Maybe we only have one choice. Okay, hurry. Michael and wow. Laura are probably... <laughs> <Another f okay. laughs> hey, oh, they're a little bit creepy as well. Barney, I just want you to know I have no hard feelings. It wasn't the best idea for us to get involved. I hope we can still be friends. Mm, wait. Thanks, Wendy. Of wait. course we can. She pointed you drink. If you need anything else, let me know. Wow. Gotta hand it to wait Wendy. Wait That was very mature of her. She's gonna try to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. This is poison. That's what I'm saying. What are you talking about? Ted, look at the facts. I dump her, and she says no hard feelings. She's a psycho. What other <laughs> explanation is there? And you dumped her in a Barney way, which was ruthless. Far more likely possibility that she doesn't want to date you either. Hmm. 
Where did Marshall get that hamburger? I don't know. I guess Wendy the waitress brought it to him. Um, yeah, they <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Dude, you're welcome. <laughs> Looks so sad. You've been sitting here <laughs> pretending to be the expert on all this, but the truth is there was no real fallout from your breakup at all. Yet. You're an idiot. Yeah, true. Wait till season seven. These things will all happen to you as surely as they happen to all of us. It's a rule of nature. Well, I'm sick of all the rules. There's too many of them. But there I'm is a lot. There is a lot of rules. Law, the platinum rule. Oh, that, that, I fully meant the step. I'm thinking of the steps. Chances are Stella and I are not going to live happily ever after. The overwhelming odds have it ending badly. And when that happens, it'll be for one of a million possible reasons. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. First. And when it does fail, so help me God, it's not going to be because of some rule. It, and then cut to him. P.S. You just made my hair look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. So Stella and I went oh, on oh. our date. Uh, but here's the funny thing. Go on. Turns out it wasn't actually a date. Hey, so what do you mean it wasn't a date? Uh, she thought we were seeing a movie just as friends. Why would she think that? Well, did she see your tattoo and assume you were gay? <laughs> hey, there's a rule that says I can't date Stella. Exactly, the platinum rule. Stella reads my blog. Mm. No, this rule comes from the American Medical Association. Oh. Doctors aren't legally allowed to date their patients. Oh, are they, are they technically doctors? I mean, yeah, I've never, I've never had a tattoo lasered off. Story between me and Stella, at least for the time being. Mm. But I don't know. Looking back on the platinum rule, I think there's a ninth step. We'll call it coexistence. It's the moment you realize that all that anger and Are they still work together. And you okay. start to let go of it. Hey guys. Check Ted dishing out the wise wisdom. A few friends over. I'm gonna play some trades. Have fun. <laughs> and move on with your life. <laughs> so and she does it still work here then. On the house. Thanks. Yeah, no, <laughs> still not. Yeah. He might be on something. He might be on something. Uh, that was a fun episode. Like I say, I, I, I know I, I probably sound like I'm repeating myself so much with these reviews, and I apologise for it. But I just love how, that the show continues to be so creative with the way they tell certain stories. Um, because, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of sitcoms, again, I always use Friends as an example, like they kind of do the creative thing and then drop it. This could do that still. I really hope they don't, as I've said. Um, but I feel like a lot of other sitcoms would have told the story in just like such a linear, straight, narrow way. Uh, where this like with the, like you have the slow mostly and you have them, them jumping between four different, four different timelines, would it be? Yeah, literally four different separate years. So doing a lot of time jumps there and like I say, the way the domino affects certain uh, ways of it with the steps and stuff as well, which I've already forgot. What did they have? Fallout, the tipping point, attraction. Ted added coexistence on there. I forgot all the bloody rest, but uh, yeah, Ted. And, and again, th I thought we were going to do the whole joke of him like, then it comes back and he's like, oh no, it didn't work out kind of thing. Um, but him kind of dishing out wise sage advice. Ted does have his moments. Like I said, I don't, I won't say I love and adore Ted as a character yet, but he's so much better than he was in season one. Um, so yeah, I really, I really like Ted as a character. Like, he's not my favourite of the show, as obvious from the tier list that we did, but he's up there. He's up there. He's a really good character. I mean, for the, for now, it could really fall off as time goes on, but for now, I really like him as a character. He's chilled out so much. He still has his Ted moments, but compared to season one, like I said, he's just... So much more chill. So yeah, really great episode. I'll go. I'll go an eight out of ten for this one. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I, again, I know technically we weren't spending the whole episode in the apartment, and I feel like how many mother maybe hasn't had one like that just yet. Maybe they have. Um, but as I said with the friends reactions, I love episodes where it's just, especially with sitcoms where it's just all set in the one apartment. Uh, New Girls done it a few times. Friends did it a bunch of times, and how many mother maybe has done it once. And this technically, I wouldn't say counts because the present day was all in the apartment but we had so many scenes outside the apartment that I wouldn't count it as that one uh, but 
yeah, I really like episodes that do that. But thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know if you thought of the episode down below in the comments. And I'll see you next time for episode 12. Until then, take care. Peace.